Welcome to the One Hero Podcast, where we answer Malaysians' burning questions about personal finance with fact-based answers. Say Limited is the parent company of one of the biggest e-commerce platforms in Southeast Asia, Shopee, as well as gaming company Garena and digital financing company C-Money. Say Limited grew leaps and bounds during the pandemic. However, the company's growth has slowed down in the years after. In fact, C's most recent revenues even missed analyst estimates by 150 million, causing the company's share price to plummet. Today, C Limited's price is about a tenth of its highest during the pandemic. That being said, is this company worth your investment? Welcome back to Stock Investing from Zero with One Hero, where we put a beginner's lens on companies and help you decide if you should invest in them. So John, where should a beginner start looking when deciding if they should invest in C Limited? Don't don't invest in it just because you love the brand and love the shopping experience, okay? <laughs> yeah. Um, so again, back to the foundational four questions. Run through any company with these four questions. It will save you a ton of uh, heartache, headache along uh, down the line, okay? First, what do they do and how do they make money? Secondly, are they profitable and financially stable doing it? Third, who is the audience? How big they can grow? You don't need to be precise. There's no number that can give you a precise number. Uh, even though some industry reports, they say, oh, this is the size of the addressable market. Take it with a pinch of salt because they have to use estimation as well, okay? And last but not least, are they cheap or expensive? Now, uh, first and foremost, we got to figure out for an e-commerce website. And I think we, we've gone through history on this, right? you remember lelong.com? <laughs> oh, uh, 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 until, yes, yes. I, I used to use lelong.com. Yeah. I, I, I also used to do this, okay? Uh, what I've heard, and obviously I've not verified this, but what I heard from a very prominent private equity VC guy was that when C and when Lazada actually came to, Mal no, when Lazada actually came to Malaysia, um, one of the co-founders of Lazada, they actually approached lelong.com to actually collaborate. Hmm. You wanna re you wanna guess what was Lelong.com's response? Hmm. They just said no. shoo, scram off, don't waste my time. I'm the big daddy in town. Okay. And where is Lelong.com today? Don't know. I haven't used it in years. Is it yeah. still is it still alive? I, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm gonna check on my screen. Have a look, okay. have a look. Yeah, I, I I don't think they are. I don't think they are. Uh, and um, it's it's the 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 point I'm trying to make is, uh, whenever you think you are the king of the mountain, wow, even has a like vulnerability side. Uh, 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 you know, you when you when you don't have like uh, SSL. <laughs> is is that why? Oh yeah, I forget if they've been sold out, bought out, or something like that. But yeah, I mean to that point, right? Um, I I, wow, started in I straight away I got a warning. It's like it's an insecure website. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Maybe it's no longer in operation. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, to to your point around like Lelong being the big big dog at that time, um, the difference between these platforms, right, like Lazada and Shopee and Lelong, right? Lelong back then, if you wanted to sell on Lelong, you actually needed to pay to sell. Ah, yes, yes, yes. And then here comes Lazada and Shopee that you can just, just don't need to pay. Yeah. Become a seller for free. Yes, you know? yes, yes. That yes. alone, right, already killed a, a big portion of um, Lelong's profits. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a good point that you brought up, Louis, because both are in e commerce, but someone just disrupted the status mm. quo or the game. Mm. And I think where, where, uh, where Lazada and, uh, and Shopee did very well is that we provide value first mm. and only after uh, we have shown you the value, then we take a, that we, then we take a cut. Lah. So for me, right, as, as a Shopee merchant, you know, I, I, I'm saying if I become a Shopee merchant, it's, it's something that is like a no-brainer because there's no risk for me starting. But if I do well, then I complain lah, because the cut rate can from Shopee and from Lazada can be quite, yeah. quite thick lah, for the lack of yeah. a better word. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So... Okay, uh, let's let's go through uh, ticker. 
and let's go and see where they are. <coughs> okay, obviously, first question, what do they do? How do they make money? Um, we can actually go to the website. Okay, straight away we type. Uh, the beauty about invest, uh, the beauty about a public listed company, usually they will have this section called investor relations. And from there alone, you can get quite a lot of stuff. Lah. So there were there are two ways I was trying to go at it. One is I go to my favorite one, which is uh, Ticker. By the way, if you're not a user of Ticker or whatever yet, you know, uh, we're going to include the links, the affiliate links. No cost to you uh, at all to sign up. Uh, I'm subscribed to the full pro version. Uh, and it gives me global, um, what do you call it, global access to all the financial data around the world, okay? So see, the first thing you would see is in this section, there's always a write-up, okay? You can follow this or you can follow the original website. Either way, I mean, like, what you want to get is a quick, like, a five-minute kind of overview. What do they do? So you've already mentioned Garena, Shopee, See Money, um, leading online games developer, publisher, largest pan e-commerce platform. Okay. I think even my mom and my dad will know Shopee, even though they're not invested. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's so convenient, right, Louis? I mean, do, do you have, are you a merchant on Shopee? Um, I, I, I am a merchant on Shopee. Uh, my, my shop is on holiday right now, but I used to sell on Shopee for a couple ah, of years. I see. Um, I see. Yeah. yeah. Back then, um, Shopee really disrupted the market which was at that time dominated by Lazada because mm. they came in as a mobile first. I see, uh, I see. Platform. Whereas back then, Lazada came in as a disruptor to Leilong, right? Mm. All of these like uh, free listings, etc. Then came in Shopee. Shopee gave the free commissions, free commissions to sellers, you know, and then that mobile experience. Ah. Because how we have... Was, hmm? Sorry. How was the fulfillment like between Lazada and Shopee? Fulfillment yep. is still third party on both ends. Uh. Yeah, yeah. They don't have a... I mean, they, they now have like their own like Shopee now. They have Shopee Express. But back then, uh, when Shopee launched, it was done like by third parties like Postaju, mm. then mm. Emotions, like that. But in terms of like right now, um, Shopee, Lazada, they don't have that full control over the whole fulfillment. Understand. Understand. Only the last mile, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Do, do, they, do they exercise influence in the sense that, that the... I, I mean like... The first question I'm asking is re very related to what do they do, how do they make money, is because they take a cut from whatever you sell, ma, correct? Mm, yeah. And yet they don't have their own fulfillment and everything because it's very costly to set it up. But at the same time, when a consumer actually buys, they 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 usually associate that ex buying experience with Shopee or with Lazada. Indirectly, yeah. they will say that yeah. it's Lazada's fault or whatever, even yeah. though it's a courier company, right? True. But do you think, in your opinion, does Shopee have influence over the third-party fulfillers, people like JNT, people like Shopee Express? Shopee Express, they have, right? But I think mainly the Clang Valley. I don't think they have it in, mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. Sarawak, no. Sabah. Well, it's, it's not all over like Malaysia. No. Very, yeah. very limited. Very limited. Yeah. Uh, Lazada, Lazada has a actually better fulfillment than Shopee. Ah, yeah. okay. Lazada yeah. actually has a better control over their fulfillment. They, they have had like Fulfilled by Lazada for many, many years already. I see, yeah. I see, I see. Yeah, no, this is this is good That's insight. Very expensive, yeah. How much would you pay extra? I mean, like if you say Lazada had better fulfillment, did they actually charge you extra from the tech? Yeah, rate? yeah. So um if you use their storage place, if I'm not mistaken, it's like per item. Ah. And then like every time they handle there's another cost, and of course the shipping fee, handling, storage, packaging, uh, shipping. Uh, this is usually like part of the package. Uh. So I it see. depends on um, how much uh, products you have. Yeah. So so over time, if you 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 you, you can do the economics uh, some sometimes because you have products that are expensive, mm. you have to cover that cost uh, minus your own overheads, right? Versus, versus your own overheads, it may make sense. Uh. Understand. Yeah. You park a fatter margin uh, in a way. Yeah, like, correct. Cost, correct. Uh. Understand. Yeah. Understand. Okay, so a very good statistics. You said their market cap drops quite substantially. Let's look at this. Huh? So all in. Wow, look at that. Mount Everest. And then all the way down. It's like... Uh, I, was surprised. I was surprised that it dropped that much. You know, went from yeah. 300 something now to 30, in the 30s, is it? Yeah, 30, wow. 50, 50. No, now it's how much? Huh? Now it's 38. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> 
about a ninth, right? Yeah, about, about a ninth, ninth of the value. Yeah. Yeah. So, move on to the next question. Profitability. So, we know that they make money from a take uh, by hosting an e-commerce platform. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, oh, they, they, they will take a take from the, uh, the merchants. Listing is free, but whatever you sell, they will have a take. And then from the customers, obviously, they will charge the shipping. I don't think they mark, mark up shipping that much, to be honest, because... No, no, I don't think they earn much from the shipping, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It could be even at a loss, you know, just to be... Yeah, sure. yeah. I, I, yeah. I feel like, from my perspective as a previous merchant, I feel like sometimes they have that to try to improve the, the, the experience mainly. The mm. cost is like it's almost same or even cheaper. Shopee yeah. Express is sometimes cheaper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, Louis. So we're going to look at the second question is, are they profitable and financially stable doing that? Okay. So mm. let's look at their finances. Okay. So profitability going through the roof. Uh, sales going through the roof, not profitability. Um, very high margins. Okay. For an e-commerce website, I think. For 39%. Um, yeah. Making losses. Losses actually grew wider and wider, Louis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and cash flow, cash flow. Ah, they managed to get some cash flow, positive cash flow in 2020 during the COVID days, 2021 during COVID. And last 12 months, wow, okay, 1.3 billion in terms of... You, I don't know whether you followed the news, Louis, the... Just a little, just a little, yeah. Just a little. The, the founder was saying that they they had to limit two toilet paper rolls per employee or something like that. Oh, no, I didn't see that. Yeah, that, I, I, wow. I found it quite hilarious. Uh. Interesting. <laughs> a lot of my fund manager friends were like saying, uh, it's quite funny because how much can they move the needle with toilet paper? <laughs> it, it, yeah, I, I think that's, like I, I, I've, I've seen the broad uh, cost cutting, like, you know, like, freezing hiring you know uh, layoffs but this this is completely new so wow i mean what else could could they save on right? yeah they, maybe they, they said that uh you have to cannot use disposable spoon everybody has to bring their own cutlery and wash you know things wow. like that lah. maybe oh, lah. i don't know but I, I feel those that doesn't really need move the needle and the other thing i feel is also this uh they will e-commerce is a very brutally competitive space you look at JD, you look at Meituan, you look at even Alibaba in, the chi in China, right? And Alibaba had to fend off competition from eBay, but eventually they did. Why? It's because they're very localized. Yeah. The eBay team in China had to always refer back to the US team where US, they, if you're not on the ground in China, you wouldn't even understand cultural nuances. I think the same the same thing happened here in Southeast Asia where Lazada, where C actually based their, themselves in. That's why you see C, right? Even though the guy is Chinese, he didn't compete in China. He mm. was he was studying in Singapore, okay, Forest Lee was studying in Singapore. Uh originally founded within the Singapore region as, as, anyway. And they 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 thrive when it was local, local driving local, they will understand uh how bad infrastructure is for like last mile fulfillment they would also understand what kind of packaging that if you give it to the logistics partner they how, how bad they will handle the packages so all these nuances uh our sale you know when, when, when are the dates to do your sale you know your it's, it's not your valentine's day in in in, in like in china where there's a 11 11 that kind of thing it's not even a culture here you know i don't know you realize that 11 11 was never a malaysian culture it's just never never, never. Yeah. i think even when lazada was like the only uh, big marketplace uh, they never did that until yeah. Shopee did it then you know they followed correct 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 so i think to thrive and uh, the the struggle with platforms like this is you spend so much money on incentives you give free shipping you get coupon left right center right why is because you want the flywheel to happen. You want people to come. The your honeypot is the Shopee or the Lazada. You want them to come onto this honeypot, and hopefully you keep them captive. And they take away the honey. That means they come, they get stuck in your honeypot, and then you take away the honey. The problem is this, Louis. You and I know that Malaysians are so price conscious that there's no platform loyalty. Will you agree with me or not when I make this statement? Uh, for sure, for sure. I mean, I, I, I saw it firsthand because like, 
the the moment Shopee came in with all this free shipping, Lazada's sales definitely dropped a lot. We I have I have seen the statistics for that uh, immediately. Yeah, Shopee grew so much because they offer so many free things to Malaysians, right? right? But right. now but now it's it's fair game again. It's fair game, yeah. And I think that's why well what, what we're looking at uh on, on the finances is that these free things come at a cost. Someone has to pay for lunch, put it this way, right? And it's a matter of how do you the tweak those levers. Right? Sorry, sorry? The investors. Yes. So how how much do you tweak the lever in a sense that it's enough attracting and we stop the freebies and then we'll it's fair game now. Let's see who 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 actually wins on, on different angles. Are. Like I've asked different users, right? And different um, even merchants like you. What they tell me is that if for electronic stuff, go to go to Lazada because the suppliers that they get on board the platform are usually the better guys. Whereas in Shopee, you get the the, the not so good ones, ah, not so good ones. And then it's cheaper, yes, but actually the quality on, on Lazada electronic stuff is much better. So I was like, hmm, that's an interesting insight. Is it because that the, because the, fil the 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 filtration system they don't give freebie and all that? That's why the merchants that come on on board are actually of higher quality. That's something I haven't explored. I haven't like nailed down. But that was an interesting observation that I noticed from the commerce uh, commerce guy, mm -hmm. Louis. In terms of um, shopping experience, would you say that uh, the app between the two app in terms of the UI UX? Is there much difference competition? Does one app annoy you over the other or you feel it's fair game? Um, I, I, I think that Shopee still wins in terms oh. of the app for me. For me, I like using Shopee much more than Lazada. In fact, I haven't shopped in Lazada in five years maybe and still haven't bought anything. I yeah. mean, I, I've seen the app improve in the last year. I think there were some changes in the management in Lazada as well. And that's uh, propelled the growth of the um, development for the app. But so far, I haven't switched over. Nothing has convinced me to, <laughs> to switch over. over to Lazada again. Yeah. Yeah. And you alluded earlier, they came with a mobile first approach, right? Which was correct. Yeah, correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, next, who is the audience and how big can they grow? Now, um, I don't know the answer. L let's try to find the answer with their presentations. Okay. So, you go to the investor relations website. They even have webcast infographics. Let's see what the infographic looks like. Huh? I've not seen this. Oh, okay. E-commerce. Okay, 2.1 billion. Okay, let me close this to zoom in a little bit. Actually, I don't know how big how big their addressable market is for each of the segment because ah, okay. Here, here we're coming closer. 504. 544 million active users. Now, if you are C and if you know that Southeast Asia, total population within this Southeast Asia region is about 600, 600 something million. Okay. Uh, I don't know how they calculate this. Is this individual users or is this like uh, one username per user? Because 5.44 million, it sounds like as if they've conquered the whole Southeast Asia market. You get I me? Mean? Southeast Asia, the, the total population is only about 600 million plus. So you're talking about Brunei, Singapore, whatever. Maybe they included Brazil. I don't know. I've not you know, read up on Brazil, the numbers and all that kind of thing. Uh, as, as we said, this episode is stopped from zero. So literally, the research is being done on the fly as we show, you, show this to you. Digital finance services, uh, good revenue. Look at their... Entertainment versus their marketplace. Uh. E-commerce 2.1 on you know, 2.1 billion. Okay. Digital entertainment is a quarter of that, 524. Okay. And then digital finance services. This is interesting. Uh get getting to 427 million in terms of revenue already. So this uh they recently got a license, if I'm not mistaken, a banking license. Do, do you read about it, Louis? Mm, this part no. Okay. License. Uh. C limited banking license. Yeah, there. For a what a full digital full banking license in Singapore. Oh, oh okay, okay, in Singapore. 2020. Yeah. So it's catching up. Remember in one of the earlier episodes we did Grab 
and Grab actually also is looking towards moving into this space bigger and bigger after securing their license, right? Oh. The struggle is this, Louis. Will you put a hundred thousand in C in in uh, your C wallet? Or? No. Ten K. Unless, unless ten uh, K maybe, maybe ten K maybe. Um, it depends on what I buy, I guess. So like, if I'm just a normal user, I don't think I would use hundred K. Ten K mm. maybe. Yeah, if you buy a few electronics, lah. Yeah. Yeah, a, a kitchen appliances and all that you put right. Okay. So, uh, like what you said, they, they, they miss earnings estimate for, for the quarter and then people punish the stock, okay? I think for me, it's like I'm trying to find how big is the, is the market. And obviously, it's not an easy answer to, to answer. So, I think what we can do is look for e-commerce industry reports. So, mm. if you can't find uh, those, usually these are very expensive paid kind of reports. So another hint that I usually give to people is try to read their prospectus. Because mm. for the prospectus, even though it may be old, maybe two to three years, but you roughly know, okay, that was the starting point, like let's say five years ago when I listed, this is the addressable market. Okay. And then you, you, you linearly grow it, let's say 5% a year or whatever. You roughly know where's the addressable market at this point as well, even though you may not have the latest data. That's another hack lah that I, I try to teach people because here I was like thinking whether they could roughly show what is the, the size of the market for e-commerce and all that, but apparently they don't have it here. Mm, it's not yeah. very clear, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Addressable mar market has always been difficult to estimate. It's always an estimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Yeah, yeah, it's always an estimate. Okay. So last but not least, is it cheap or expensive? Okay, go back to ticker. We go valuation. Okay, I want to change it to annual and let's take 23, 6. Let's take 10 years. Ah. Oh, they only listed until 2014. Okay. They were listed in 2016 or 17. I can't remember. Okay. So let's plot it out. Ah. Look at normalized price to normalized earnings. Okay. It was negative for the other half and positive for the other half. In Jan in March 2023, only then valuations went very high. Okay. So we're looking at a band of between wow, minus 52 times. I don't know where you can see my screen, Louis. Cannot. A bit small, yeah. yeah a bit smaller, huh? Here. So it's minus 52 times to uh, a high of 62 times. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's quite crazy. Yeah. High of 62, mean of 6.71, but low of minus 52. So the right now is trading for about 15.73 times uh, PE. Trailing. Uh. What about forward? Forward is here. Oh, sorry. 15 is forward. 15 is forward. Okay. 15 is forward. Yeah. Uh, last 12 months is negative. Because it's making losses, it's so lost. it cannot be calculated PE. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So if you ask me, uh, I personally, after I found out more and more about e-commerce websites, I don't really like the game that they're playing. Mm. The margins are a little bit thin. Uh, take rate, customers' loyalty is almost. I mean, you you are quite loyal. I mean, you're a merchant. You're also a customer. You've not shot on Lazada. So Lazada, if you want to make real money, you have to convince Louis. Okay, if you're listening to this, <laughs> yeah. Don't come for, don't come for me. Uh. I used to use it a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So I think in terms of whether it's cheap or expensive for me, I don't really have a strong opinion because I don't like the business model. But for you, maybe you understand it. You're an ex Lazada guy or your ex. Um, what do you call it? Your ex uh, e-commerce, Leilong, whatever, and you you understand this business really really well. Go for it, right? I I'm like totally uh, I'm agnostic to it because I am not really a fan after knowing more and more about them. What what about you, Louis? Mm, yeah, my myself, I also I'm not a big fan either. I I have been. I, I mean, as a, as a merchant, it's great, you know, like platforms competing between one another. Yeah, for, yeah. For your for your attention, right? So when they do that, usually that means a lot of incentives, right? So Lazada at one point, if I'm not mistaken, they used to take like about um, 20 something percent for the highest commission. Wow. Quite wow. a lot. And it kept going up, you know? So um, when Shopee came in, imagine like 
zero and twenty four percent, right? Ah, what was the initial zero to four percent? Uh, which platform? Uh, Shopee. Uh, Shopee it used to be zero zero. That's zero. Wow. For everything for everything like they didn't even charge a payment uh transaction fee. Ah. Now they charge a payment like fee of I think two percent. Two percent. I think it's very fair to be honest. Two percent. It, it is fair. It is fair. But like if you if you like train all of these like merchants to, um, not pay for it, someone's gonna get angry, right? Of course. Of come course. in and pay something that they have enjoyed for free for five years. So suddenly you come in like, oh, actually I need to charge this, right? So what happens is that they'll start to compare the fees and hop over to Lazada. Unless that there's also something in Shopee like where um, brands have to be exclusive with them to enjoy certain mm. deals. Yeah, yeah, so for those brands, it's a bit harder for them to jump to Lazada because there are like terms and conditions. Correct, correct. Longer terms and conditions. Yeah, agreed too, right? But for the rest of them, which is like probably the 99%, they, they can move around as they like, right? Yeah. Or sell less or sell more expensive. There's a lot of strategies going on. La. That's right. Uh, but as a business, as a as a as a potential company to invest in, I'm I'm not strongly um I don't have I I'm I'm not like strongly attracted to it because of how how I see the behavior like yeah. of, of their customers. So yeah. their customers are like mainly the sellers, like I feel mm. like buyers right so yeah. sellers are the customer and, and and they their behavior is just like oh who's like expensive i'll go away and then find something cheaper if the platform works fine i'll go there people yeah. sell, are selling on lazada sometimes even more than shopee mm. there are less competition so sometimes they will move back and then when, when when shopee becomes like the old lazada they move there again something like this I see. Move around. they always move around so, yeah. so for me there's no loyalty. Like, and th this is exactly what I don't like about this business model because they have to spend so much money in SG and A, sales, uh -huh. general, rate, which is the part where you do marketing, incentives, oh, and that kind okay. of thing. And when that chunk is a variable cost, that means you want to make it look profitable, can reduce your marketing, reduce your incentive, whatever. But your sales is going to take a dive. Your net profit is also going to take a dive. Where, where you and I know, we talk about uh, 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 loyalty or flywheel, right? I I doubt they are like you know the saps and the oracles of this mm. world. All your ERP system, you want to yank it out and do it from yeah. fresh. You can forget it. I can yeah. tell you, it's so tough, right? Like, uh, even HR systems, if it's like containing your custom, uh, your your employee files that are like very very embedded in your CRM systems and all that lah. So the, these these are kind of things that are so sticky that the business model warrants them or allows them to increase prices every year and customers yeah. complain but they still have to pay because they you hold them by the by, by the balls uh, for the lack of a better word uh. <laughs> yeah yeah i think i think it's just like the the cost of migration right basically yes. like what's yes. the cost you know like i i also like help e-commerce uh, merchants to move between platforms and one of the biggest ones would be cost mm. we have cost of like migrating and, and the uncertainty Will, will the new service actually match right. up to like, right. what I'm using now? What if I'm making a mistake? It can, like for a small business, it can go from like 5K to 20K. Mm. Your business is, we're talking six to seven figures migration. That's right. That's right. That's Training right. staff, all of that. But when you, when you look at platform like Shopee, there's like literally nothing to train. Yeah. Yeah. You just move yeah. here, move there. All the uh, features are almost the same. You list the product, do some, all the almost the same thing. Yeah. So they just go for, you know, sometimes they, they have already like stores on both, right? So it's a matter of like activating, deactivating. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Nothing's and stopping think... you from being on, on both platforms, you know, because Correct. You, Correct. you don't have to pay a fee either way, right? And I think that, that that's also a, a very good thing, a, a very good insight because there's no painful process to move because you don't have to pay a thing. Mm. Think, and it because of that it encourages certain behaviors ah. mm. yeah mm. it encourages certain behaviors yeah, ah. I, I just feel like you know whoever can bleed gets the customer but is that you know gonna make you money in the long term yeah like yeah. I, I feel like right now Shopee, Lazada listed companies right so I mean that a, a companies under the listed companies the ones that survive are like this they can burn a lot of money Correct. We used to have a lot of other players like Eleven Street, um, Uberly, uh, platforms like that. Ah, yes. A lot of people don't, have not heard of them, but 
some are still in existence but not not like people are not going there because they have nothing like their prices are more expensive there's so so much costs that are not subsidized right in some way yeah but yeah so it's a bit hard the honey, right? the honey is gone the honey is dried up no, no honey from the start you know <laughs> start, start also don't have honey so ah. it's a bit hard this business i feel like it's a very hard business to do understand yeah. understand mm. okay so i think we've answered all four uh questions what do they do? How do they make money? So there's a gaming, there's e-commerce, there's a digital finance, digital banking. Uh, are they profitable, financially stable? Not really, uh, except for COVID years, they really grew like crazy. And that, that's why it, it, valuations drove through the roof uh, because of that, okay? Um, who is the audience? How big can they grow? As I mentioned earlier, and uh, Louis also alluded to this, is that it's very localized how they approach the merchant, the, the, the procurement. I think the merchant procurement is actually very, very important. How they promote mobile first approach and all that kind of thing. Southeast Asia, you're talking about six, six, seven hundred million kind of people, but different languages, different culture, different nuances. Like in Malaysia, we don't even have a Gojek on a motorcycle, but you go Thailand, you know, Thailand is very famous for those taxi motorcycles. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in KL, it, it hasn't caught on steam, you know, you realize that, right? Huh? Yeah, because uh, I, I, I think it's just yeah, cultural. We we don't trust that system, I think. Yeah. Yes. And I will never I will never go on a motorbike. Like, I would in say. KL, right? Also because we, anyway, we and even Thailand, I was in Thailand, Thailand, I was like, oh my gosh, no, no. <laughs> no yeah. yeah. It, it's just a culture. We Malaysians we don't we don't take it as a culture, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, and last but not least, are they cheap or expensive? Right now for a forward P of about fifteen times uh uh last 12 months or trading 12 months they have been loss making so can't really can't really gauge uh i think for me to if you really want to decide when, whether you want to invest or not it's really about how well do you understand the e-commerce space take rate and all that uh, i don't claim to be an expert in this uh it's not my my circle of competence uh but based on what i've seen so far the business model is not something for me lah, not palatable yeah so what's the next section Okay, so um, thanks for covering that. I mean, um, it's very insightful given you know all the all the news around shop uh, C, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, so we'll wrap things up by asking John for a book recommendation. So this is a section I intentionally put in uh, for myself actually to benefit myself because I'm new <laughs> to investing, and so if you're also like me and want to have some materials to start with. Um, this is where John will recommend it to us. So what's the investing book for today, John? Actually, it's very thematically uh, aligned to our launch for our ETF, uh, uh, our launch for our ETF masterclass this, uh, this Thursday. So for those of you who are watching this video on Wednesday, you still have one day, you can still register for the masterclass on Thursday. Um, it's actually a, the book from a legend, Louis. So mm. this legend is actually called uh, John C. Bogle, okay, Jack oh, Bogle. Oh, okay. okay. I think I've heard so of him. He is the founder and the former chairman of the Vanguard Group. Okay. Mm. Um, he wrote this very pioneering book uh, on e index investing. It's it's called the Little Book of Common Sense Investing. Red in color is being shown on the screen right now, and why I like. What I like about this book is he doesn't berate fund managers. Okay, he, he remains neutral. But what he has shown, statistically proven, that <laughs> a lot of people are not meant to be investors individually. So on one end of the spectrum, you don't trust fund managers, you want to do it yourself. On the other end of the spectrum, you have professionals and yet also being paid fees and yet not getting the results that they want. And it's actually detrimental. So he actually advocated five main things. If you were to get something out of this book, he advocated actually five main things. Huh? The first one, <coughs> sorry. The first one that he uh, he really wanted to uh, bring across was actually for you to do well investing, build a very broad, diversified, low cost portfolio without the risk of individual stocks. Because mm. individual stocks, if you do, even if you get some of it right, but you get some of it horribly wrong and you allocate wrongly, this is where you will struggle. Because um, you want to be agnostic for a few things. 
one, you, you want to be agnostic to a superstar fund manager. Let's say you bought this fund. He was a superstar fund manager, did very well, but he ran out to the other company. Then what are you going to do? You're going to sell off that unit trust. Even though you're happy to pay fees, right? You're going to sell off that fund and then you have to go to the other one. So you want to find something that's like manager agnostic. You want to be uh, individual stock agnostic because sizing is another problem. And the third thing he advocated why you need to have this broad base, low cost, is actually this thing called sector rotation. I don't know if you heard of this term before, no, Louis? No. Sector rotation in, in the high finance or the investing space is actually to denote that hot money follows a certain sector. And mm -hmm. it comes in cycles. So let's say this year the theme is oil and gas. So everyone is, all the fund managers will start putting money into oil and gas stocks. Then next year, it becomes tech. That's why now tech is ah. like, so they, they call it sector rotation is because hot money flows to whatever sector that is deemed topic or the flavor of the day. But it may come in <clears throat> short, short cycles. It may come like three months, six months, and a year, and then boom, it dies, and then it goes to the other one, you see? So again, what Jack Boger is saying, or John Boger is saying, is that forget all this. Uh, you just buy low cost, Keep it. Let let time be your friend and be uh, uh, compound the returns for you. The the second thing he wanted to emphasize is this. Uh, you see, the struggle for most investing products, Louis, is it is actually a product that's sold. Mm. People don't run out and buy a fund. People maybe people run out and buy a stock because they heard it like oh it's a hot tip from a friend or a family member or whatever. But people don't usually go out and buy a a fund or investment product or even insurance. Insurance is definitely sold. It's not a product that's bought, okay? So he said that because it is a product that's sold, <coughs> sometimes these companies come up with very creative marketing ideas. You bought a product, but the product is actually crap, but the marketing was good. So he wanted to eliminate it. Third, he wanted the audience of the book readers to understand this. Stock market return only come from three things. Okay, the first one is actually earnings growth. Second is actually dividend yield. And the third is actually change in market valuation. Only these three. Mm. Anything in between is a really speculation, short-term trading and all that. It is not sustainable. Okay, last but not least, the third, the third one, the fourth one actually, is to recognize that stock value really comes from business returns in the long run. It's not about the hype of the day, Yes, in short term, it looks, wow, you can make 100% overnight, whatever, but it will phase, it will fizz off, right? But it's really about business reality, business delivering profit that will give you that kind of returns. And last but not least, don't forget the power of compounding. I think this book probably nails a lot of the key features of low, low cost, broad based kind of index based investing. And I think um, even Buffett, uh, even Buffett, when uh, uh, John Boger actually passed on, Buffett said that he has done more for the entire finance industry than any one person. Wow. Yeah, that was Buffett's quote about him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I think, I, I think, I think it's great because um, just like listening to your your key points around this book, is that it it appeals to the common person. That's right. Like common invest common sense investing right to the common yes. person correct correct he wanted to really he was actually kind of disgusted with how much uh the industry was actually robbing returns from from shareholders and i think um he's not against fees don't get me wrong what he's saying is you pay for what you deserve and one way to to um, normalize all this is to say that hey for the common man who may not have the ability to get a private banking guy or to have like a full-time professional manager, hedge fund managing money for them, this is kind of like the best strategy already actually. Mm. Yeah. So, so very altruistic in nature. He, yeah. made, he, he lived a very frugal lifestyle to be honest. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, frugal, frugal, there's a ban as well. Uh. Frugal can mean like you... you um, being so stingy, so 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 thrifty that you 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 know you don't spend anything. He wasn't to that extent, but he live he didn't live like a king, lah. Put it this way, lah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think you could. I mean, you could definitely just like get away with not telling people this. I, I suppose like in yeah. the bank, like finance industry, you could just keep 
taking in that fee, enjoy your life, but instead you're coming out and saying, you know what, there is an alternative. That's right. But I, really, I really love that concept, and, and which is also your your values as well, right, John? Precisely, precisely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, legend in the industry just recently passed away. Um, go pick up the book. I think there's a lot of nuggets uh, that you can get from this, and it also gives you a good understanding of how the industry has evolved from the mutual fund days to this. And sadly, in Malaysia, ETF is very, very rarely talked about. Very rarely talked about. Okay. Yeah. I don't know about your experience. I have not heard of it before you. Okay. <laughs> okay. You mean trust only, la. yeah, because everyone's selling it, right? That's right, that's right. They're that's... selling it, insurance are selling it, you know. Sometimes yeah. they pack it together with other products as another like product. Correct, correct. Yeah, so take it away to close, uh, Louis. Yeah, yep, yep. So another amazing recommendation from you, John. I really enjoy all these books. I haven't bought any of them yet, but I should, I should. Yeah, so hopefully I will also like get some insights from this book. So uh, guys, if you have enjoyed this video about uh, C analysis and as well as John's book recommendation, give it a good like. Helps with the Google uh, YouTube algorithm. And if you want more content around personal finance, make sure to subscribe to One Hero. See you guys again in our next video. Bye-bye.